Hi there, that's your favorite DevOps mentor Vladimir here with another exciting interview challenge, this time about Redis. This one comes straight from one of my mentees. And for those of you who are unaware, when I'm not busy doing my full-time job and not recording these videos for you, I spend my time helping others to level up in technologies like cloud, containers, automation, and other sorts of nerdy stuff. So if you're ready to join the ranks of Elite and take your DevOps career to the new level, Go to my website that you see on your screen, it's yourdevopsmanager.com. Fill out the form and learn how can I support you during your DevOps journey. But first, let's get down to business with this Redis challenge. So here is the task. We need to create a web application that displays a message saying, this is the visitor number X, where X is a counter that is stored in Redis and incremented on each page visit. We will also need to create a CICD pipeline and architecture diagram. But for this video, I will exclusively focus only on step one. To run this application, I will use a lightweight version of Kubernetes called Minikube. It will create a virtual Kubernetes cluster that runs directly on your laptop. You can launch a Minikube cluster just using one single command, that's Minikube start. Ideal option for the local development or if you're just getting started with Kubernetes. When we run kubectl get nodes, we will see our virtual cluster. Let's first create our Redis deployment. We can use the kubectl create deployment command for that. Also, we will use kubectl expose to create a cluster IP service. kubectl expose by default creates a service of type cluster IP. This means the service will be available only from within Kubernetes cluster. So what we can do is use kubectl port forward so we can establish connections from our laptop, from our local uh, where kubectl is running directly to within the cluster to cluster IP services. Once we have port forward running, we can use Redis CLI to connect to localhost, and then this request will be redirected to the deployment that is running within our Kubernetes cluster. Now let me demonstrate to you how Redis works. Redis is an in-memory key values. In simple words, it's a database. We can put a value to this database using the set command. For example, set my key, that's the name of the key that will store the information, and hello world, that's a value that we will store. And when we run get, we can obtain the value that we previously stored. Also, there is a concept of counter. The counter is created using the incur command, and every time we uh, run incur, that stands for increment, counter is increased by one. And we can use get to obtain value of the counter as well. Let's open the code editor and create a simple web application that uses Redis counter to count the number of visitors. For this purpose, I will use Python, my favorite programming language. First, I will import the Redis module and establish the connection to the Redis cluster that I created previously. Then I'll create a class that will handle our incoming GET requests. On each GET request, it will send us a 200 response code, increment the counter, and send us the text response that contains the counter value. It will listen on localhost on port 88. Let's close our Redis prompt and instead run Python script that we created. When we open our local address on port 88, we will see the web page. When we update the page, we can see the counter get incremented. However, for some reason for each refresh, the counter is incremented two times. That happens because on each browser request, Chrome is making two actual get requests. One is to obtain the document itself, and another is to obtain favicon.eco. Favicon.eco is a small thumbnail that you see in the corner of your browser tab. To fix this, we will add one more addition to our Python code. We will increment the counter only when Chrome is connecting to the document itself, not to favicon. Let's restart our web application, and now it increments the counter correct way. We can also check the counter using the Redis CLI and obtain it using the get command. Next, let's dockerize the application so we can run it in Kubernetes as well. Our Docker file is extremely simple as usual. It will use Python 3 as a base image, it will install Redis libraries using pip, and it will copy main PI and run it during the container startup. Also, small modification in our Python script. Instead of localhost, we will use the name of Kubernetes service for our Redis cluster, that is Redis. Let's stop the execution of the web app locally and build the container. There is one more trick. We will run this eval command so we can build a Docker image directly within Minikube. 
so we don't have to push it to some public registry or configure registry authentication on the Minikube cluster. After the Docker build is completed, we don't need to push this image anywhere. We can immediately start using it within Minikube. However, there is one more thing that we need to change. By default, Kubernetes is trying to always pull the image from the remote registry. This is causing the image pullback of error that you see on the screen. To fix that, we need to edit our deployment and change the image pull policy, so if no present or never is set. And it will reuse the local image that we previously created. Once the container is running, we can expose it the same way we did for our Redis deployment and use port forward to connect it from our local machine. When we check it from our web browser, it is giving us the same counter. If we stop port forwarding, the service will no longer be available. We can also, for example, delete our counter directly from Redis, and the next time we open our web page, the number of the visits will be reset. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please support my effort by giving a like and subscribing. Thank you for watching and good luck.